So, tell me how you are like, they are not ready. Like, what are the signals? And yeah. you're just like, <laughs> I, 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 I really, really want to know. Um, like, and, and I think we kind of talked about this. It's about qualifying the people that we want to participate in our business or that we want to help. Like, they're qualifying factors, and it's not a judgmental thing. It's literally, you're not in a position where I could help you because you might not be able to accept it. But what are the things you see when you're like, they're not ready? I don't necessarily see it first because what I've learned to qualify a lot of mine is I have a strategy session sheet that they're required to fill out and I look at their answers and then I have what's called a burn process. <laughs> so if I say, you know, tell me something that hasn't been working out for you and they tell me this thing and I say, tell me why. Because whatever follows because is their limiting belief and I'll know if I can deal with that limiting belief from their answer. Because ultimately, I own my expectations, they have to own theirs. So when they invest, I know they're coming with expectations. So for me to show up fully, I gotta know that I can meet those. Yeah, it's, I kind of feel like it's, if you have a defense lawyer, like if you're not completely honest, like how can you possibly, how can that person help you to the fullest extent, right? Like, how could you leave that out? Like, yeah. so that's, that's, that's really interesting. So how has that model worked then for you? And how has it helped you kind of uncover the people that you wanted to help? And how has that gone? So, you know, I really, I mean, went kind of hardcore really just, I'd say the last six months. Um, I started Girls on Fire in June of last year. I had nine girls at my first meeting. I started doing a little coaching. Um, I was charging 99 bucks, 199 bucks, um, and giving immense value. And finally someone sat in front of me and said, you should be making more money. You should be charging more. And this is how you can, you know, here's how I see you scaling some of these things. So when I picked up on that, I started doing that. So like now, you know, my 90 minute session is $300, not 99, because you're gonna get $300, you're gonna get $3,000 worth of information. I think the key with that though, the qualifying is, I make sure everyone knows, I don't need to be an expert on you, I need to teach you to be an expert on yourself. Yeah. That's, that's really what that mindset coaching is. When people are like, what's mindset? I'm like, if you're not going after everything every day, that doesn't mean hardcore, it doesn't mean you're ignoring your self-care, that's all the other bullshit things they say, but if you're not going after what you want, if you're going after other things, I just posted today, you're putting it more effort into other people than you are yourself, that's a problem. Totally. Talk to me about why entrepreneurs underprice their value. They don't understand proposition value, and that's something I learned this year. This is literally like coaching for me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, because like this is like my so biggest weakness. So I had I had um, I had two very specific people um, that stepped into my life this last year. I had a big deal. I started Socialpreneur Socials. Yep. We were going to do a big summit, and these guys these guys didn't have a clue what they wanted to do so when i got into it i'm like you know i'm not taking this on but the big the big turning was the proposition value of something meaning if i say rich i'm going to coach you and i'm going to charge you for my five thousand dollar package i'm going to train you for you know coach you consult with you 90 days we're going to have a complete strategy for you but that five thousand dollars is going to make you five thousand or maybe five hundred thousand that's the proposition value so now i know i can come to somebody and say look if you follow these things 85 percent of what i ask you to do as i'm coaching you and you're consistent and you execute these things your return on investment will be three or fourfold okay i'll I'm, i'll devil's advocate that so I'm a personal fitness trainer. I'm like, Brandy, let's go. Uh, you're gonna have a six pack by the summer. All you gotta do is this. Here's your meal plan. Here's your macros. It's 80% diet, 20% working out. Uh, you're gonna limit your drinks, these awesome tasty beverages <laughs> to, to you know a couple a week yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I can make plenty of money knowing in the back of my mind that like I can't be around you all the time and a lot of the effort is going to be on you, mm -hmm. right? I feel like a lot of people, I'm not saying this about you, of course, I feel like a lot of people bank on the fact that they're not going to do the work for themselves and that's how they continue to get the kind of recurring value, or like the, the money, right? Yeah, that's true. So how do you convince people and have the straight and honest conversations like, look, I can do this. If you do 85% of this, it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. And if not, you're fucking yourself. 
Like, how do you how do you get them to understand and realize? I have it in writing, first of all, and then I say to them, I'm providing you with tools. What you choose to do with those tools is up to you, yeah. and that's how you're going to get your results. I'm going to be crystal clear about that. Mm. But if you do these things, because you know we were talking about it on the way up here today, that you know you can like videos. I was self-taught up until the point that I started, you know, taking webinars and paying, investing in myself a little bit because I was broke too. I took every free webinar I could. Yeah. There's no difference in me and that other person except for I wanted it more than they did. I went after it more than they did. So giving someone results is still always up to you, right? The stuff is out there. If you have a Google search bar, hello, and YouTube, you can do anything you want to do. You can accomplish anything you want. Why do you invest in the person? You're seeking approval. Two things always happen. We have a need of acceptance and a fear of rejection. We feel by creating a circle, which is why we love community, that we can eliminate those things. We feel the acceptance and we don't have as much fear because we have people that we feel like are supporting us, that care about us, right? And I do. I just care about people. I'm like, but I'm, I'm gonna light a fire under your ass. You can break down. You got 20 minutes. The other 40 minutes, we're gonna, we're gonna get on it. I love it. Um, so this is interesting. Uh, I don't know what you just said that brought it to me, but the acceptance part. Um, when it comes to entrepreneurship, one thing I want to put out there in my very limited time as an entrepreneur is like, whatever you think your family and friends are going to do for you, just like put that shit in the trash. Like, don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Like, not everyone is in love with what you're doing as you are. So for every time I think I want to approach a friend or family or whatever about things I'm like I don't anytime I get an offer rich I can help you with this or I can help your Instagram following I'm like block <laughs> like, yeah. no way like I need to know that I could do it like on my own a hundred percent so what would you say to entrepreneurs about expectation management when it comes to the support you want versus the support you're actually gonna get yeah. Well, I mean, as far as the success of the business, I, I kind of put that simply, which is why I believe in creating the ecosystem, because if you keep fishing out of the same pond, you're going to run out of fish, right? So if you're talking about your friends and your family and you're expecting them to support what you're doing, the success of your business, how many people are you going to go through before you run out, right? And most of us have learned if we've done anything that they don't understand it. They don't understand being an entrepreneur. They think it's crazy. We might as well go jump off a cliff. I mean, so... I, you know, I would just tell them as far as expectations, don't involve your family, don't involve your friends. You know, I learned that lesson. I built this this time. That was a big lesson. I hired friends before. <laughs> they totally flaked out or they didn't see the vision. And here's the biggest thing is you see potential in the people you love. You see potential in your friends, but you've got to work with reality. They may never live up to that. Now you're screwing yourself and your business. Thousand percent. Uh, I want to go back to uh, one thing you were talking about. Um, I lost my train of thought. This always happens. But uh, anyway, so okay, so we'll move forward. And girls on fire. So you have social. I'm sorry, forgive me, but you had like you have I sessions. Had, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And it was social, social entrepreneurs? We had social entrepreneurs social monthly okay. and girls on fire monthly. And which was first? Uh, girls on fire. Okay. And you have now cultivated like a pretty massive following. Like we're doing this and you're going to be in my book and I'm, cause I'm going after it <laughs> uh, because you have a very good message, but you now have very good Instagram following. I see you, you're super active. Um, Talk to me about the patience required to kind of get to that place. And I don't, you don't strike me as someone who's like in love with the following. You, I feel like you're the type of person who's more happy with a testimonial or success story like Randy unfucked my shit. Uh, but talk to me about how long it took so people have expectations uh, about or for, for people with that. So my Instagram following, a lot of that came from the fact that I had a, uh, started a little side gig when I, my business went down. So I still had to make money. And I had a business called Food Sierge. And uh, people don't know that I love to cook. Love, <laughs> love, love, love to cook. Um, but I did meal prep for people and we were doing really well. We actually did, uh, we did almost 150,000 in sales our first year. But I didn't want to do it. I wasn't passionate about it. I, don't, I need to stop you. <laughs> this brings me to the point where there's so many people who are like, I can do this. I'm like, cool, like, I can go be a salesman. I could go do this. I could go 
be a wedding videographer, whatever, I can do a lot of things and I could probably monetize, but I think there's like, the runway is just not that long because you're just like, at some point, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna get out and be like, I don't wanna do this. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, uh, okay, sorry, I interrupted you. No, it was an end to a means, I mean, or means to an end, you know, it was like I, it, it, it provided, you know, the money to put a roof over our head and not a very good one, but still, I mean, it did, it served its purpose, but I just knew, and I was like, I'm too late in my life to keep putting this off. So I'm like, I'm gonna go for it. And that's why I told my dad, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go for it. And if I don't make this happen, then I'll go get a job. I'll go get a nine to five job. Cause they had been, you know, they were helping me. And- um, Talk to me about how, sorry. Go ahead. How badly did you avoid that? Like. I've been in the same situation like if I have to I will go be a Wendy's general manager <laughs> and work on my shit at night do the Gary Vee method I like, did you know? I did I got a job at a gym and I hated it I was cleaning toilets and floors and treadmills and putting up with the assholes in the gym yeah. and you know and but that was that pivotal point and I was still wasn't making enough money and that's um, I found a doctor who wanted to buy my meal prep idea and do the, the wellness coaching and really? and I just I just said you know there's there's just more you have to get to the core of what's going on and I know I can do that so why float around it when I know I can get I can get to it that's what I was meant to do and I just whatever moment that was that I was like sink or swim I'm in I used to so I share with you a couple marriages that didn't pan out. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Uh, it's completely fine. But I can tell you that uh, my last one, I was just like, is this it? I would literally be in bed like, is this it? And it was just like plagued me. Like I just felt like if I don't do something, then what's going to happen? I think I'm going to blink and I'll be 60 and I'll be like, oh shit. Um, and I don't know if you've ever read Mark Manson. Uh, oh his, yeah, I love yeah, him. Yeah, I, I love him. I, before he was huge, I read his blog and I would write him. And I emailed him and I told him my situation. He goes, if it doesn't feel right, that's enough. You don't need anything catastrophic to happen. Like two sentences and I'm like, game over. And then like everything, everything took place. So, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is I, I really resonate with the fact that, uh, you know, there's always another like echelon, I think, to whatever it is you think that you're doing, which is right. Like, I agree with you that if it's not lighting you on fire, then what are you doing? Because you could quickly end up with regret. Um, okay, so sorry for that diatribe. It always happens. So now here we are. We're in Richmond, and you're in Richmond. Why? So we're doing Girls on Fire. We're launching here in Richmond. Uh, we have the one in Norfolk and we're going to Charlotte, Raleigh, and Atlanta next. Okay, so tell me how the hell that happened when <laughs> you, you were in Norfolk and it's like, okay, and then it's expanded and did you get intimidated at all by the fact that you're like, this is gonna be a massive undertaking, this thing is gonna explode, what have I done? The only feeling that comes with that still from childhood is um, who the hell am I to think I can do this? And then I shut that voice up really quickly. Because I, you know, I know I was born to do it, and I know that women need this. Because I see, like you said on my social media, it's funny. I have a huge following, but I don't have a lot of engagement because I think people are scared I'm going to call them on their shit, and I am, and that's fine. But they get a lot out of it. But at the end of the day, that one woman, every meetup we have, you see it on their faces. They have aha moments, and I'll get a message or I'll get a review, and I'm like, that's all I need. That that right there, that's all I need. I agree. Uh, I completely agree. Th those are just like pivotal validation moments I think like when if you're actually helping another person in some facet of their life it is so gratifying like yeah. and uh, I think I told you when I when I met Gary B he's like do you know what this feels like he's like it's not about the money he's like I want this and I was like thank you he's like no thank you and blah 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 but it, it's I believe him when he says that like yes I understand he's got a ton of money and wants to buy the Jets but like I believe that he's just like these moments are the moments that like make everything I do worthwhile. Um, so you're expanding. So you're all over the East Coast. Uh, what are your aspirations uh, for this long term, and how can people join? So well, obviously with Girls on Fire, I mean, we're, our, the goal is 50 cities in three years. Okay. We uh, each girl that runs each city is called a fire starter. We have yeah. a full onboarding program for her. We train her. I coach her weekly. 
they're in a private group. Um, so they're getting a ton of value to grow their business, grow their community. Um, but what we really want women to know, and we say this, um, our amazing website actually got launched today. It's like, yeah. it's killer. But tell, we tell us the website. So oh, we can... uh, girlsonfirenetwork.com. Okay. But the big thing we always tell everyone, if you think you're going to come into this group, it's not about networking and bringing a business card and shaking a hand. Yes. It's about creating, hey, you know, here's what I do. Help me understand what you do. And is there a way we can collaborate? Can I offer a lead? Can I just be supportive in the city that we're in? Because here's the thing. We'll have 10 girls that come and do like Rodan and Fields. Three of them are in the top 1%. Do you know what that means? They're making six figures. They're not competing with each other because they all have their little niche. And that's what we do in the coaching process is, you know, we have one lady who's probably well into her 50s. I'm her target market at 46. She's not going to go after the little 21-year-olds, right? That's where the other girl who's maybe late 20s and say, hey, start taking care of your skin now. But there's always a way around it. Mm -hmm. So we, we promote collaboration over competition. Yes. Uh, I, I think... Um there's a huge point to what you're saying that everyone should know, which is at the beginning of this, I'm just like, who can I meet that can get me something? And I'm just like, and I switched that pretty quickly about a month in. I'm like, who can I give something to? And that has opened up doors galore. And it will keep, the more you do it, the more it will happen. The things that have happened to me and in this 18 months, I just had my first Girls on Fire in June of last year. It hasn't been a year. I had nine girls, nine. By the time we hit our one year mark, we'll be in four to five cities, which that was never even the plan when I started it. It was the same thing. I was like, I need to establish myself as a coach and a consultant. How do I do that? When I have all these other people saying they do the same thing I do. Now, I mean, and it's not cocky, but I'm like, I'm, I put the proofs in the pudding, as my grandma says, right? I showed it to them. I didn't even start charging until last month because I wanted them to see the value. And we had, we had 72 girls show up last month. And that's just in Norfolk, so I can't even, you know, the other cities. So let's finish on that, which is you started with nine. You didn't know this is what's gonna ha how it was going to be. When you see things start to scale or the potential, um, like, tell me about the mindset you need in order to act on it and not let that opportunity go. Like, not to get paralyzed by thinking about it too much and being like, you know what? Like, it's time to go to Richmond. Like, what's the mindset you need or how do you think about that? It, I think it just goes back to you not having expectations to know you're going to fail. You know shit's going to go wrong. Um, there's going to be hiccups. But if you stick with it, it's perseverance and consistency. If you're really positive, you can scale this thing, whatever it is. That's what I'm really good at with small businesses and solopreneurs. I can, I can find a way to show them how to do the exact same thing. I've, I've always, that's just always been a knack of mine. Yeah. And that's when I, when I decided on Richmond and going to the other cities, I thought, these women are telling us here, we have three women, like 300, 312 that were actually interested. Now, maybe we only have 72 show up. But if those 300 women clicked on a button, they're looking for something. Can I give that to them? Probably. Yeah, I love it. So where can everyone find you and all your latest goods, goodness, all that good stuff? Uh, where can we find you online? Yeah, so Phoenix, so thephoenixfactor.com is the consulting and coaching agency. Um, we do collaborative events as well. Mm -hmm. So we help you know, people create those ecosystems for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the Girls on, you know, Girls on Fire Network, um, we have a membership now. So the women actually come in and get full on coaching programs, tutorials, and all the support. And we have these, we're, they can become a fire starter and we're helping them make money. We actually give them a piece of this. We want them to succeed. Love it. Yeah. Um, my last question, which you don't have to answer now is, uh, which I always ask my interviewees, is after this interview and the way we've interacted, do you have anyone in mind who would be a great person for me to interview that does not do what you do and is potentially not in the same industry as you? And if not, oh gosh, I know a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, that I think are pretty dynamic. I, but I, I'm going to tell you, if you want a story, like a really good story that'll help um, other people persevere and understand they can get through, is uh, Allison Fisher. Okay. We're connected on LinkedIn. I talked to her. Is now. She in New York. She is in New York. I do know Allison. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. I love her story. I love her because she is a giver. She puts value out day after day after she day does. after day, and she's not selling anything. It's not like she, with the company she's currently with, she can't do anything. She's just, she's genuinely putting... She's an entrepreneur. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, I've seen her. Uh, I've interacted with her before, so that that's a great suggestion, so thank you. Um, and I appreciate it. Like, we, we, we got it done, and here we are. We're, we were behind schedule, now we're ahead of schedule. Yeah. So thank you for everything. Thank you.